Hey, Sam, all the favorites tonight, eh? Yes, only two more to go. Look, see if you can wake up that chief clerk. I need some money. Sure, I'll do it, but I don't yeah, see Yeah, good what... boy. As soon as I've paid off the shop money, I'll see you in the Rosen crowd. Okay. Okay, Rick. Did you have to do that? For that guard? Maybe he's Shut dead. up! We're chasing the car now. It's turned off the North End Road, heading over the bridge. Move to intercept. Nobody goes in. But the man's a personal friend of mine. All we want to do is talk to him. You don't think I'm going to keep this thing quiet, do you? I'm sorry. No one goes in. Hello, Don. Hi. Uh, watch out. The morning star's on the job. <laughs> Better late than never. All right, all right. I've been here all the time. I've been watching the races. I understand you've been in mouthfuls, Don. But you and that editor of yours no longer saw eye to eye. As a matter of fact, he doesn't even know I'm out here. He thinks I'm covering some social function in Crawley. Excuse me. That's the way to be a reporter and hold your job. I have an aunt that knows a newspaper. Inspector Barnett. Yes? Anything new on the gang that pulled this job? It was a getaway car, crashed at the bridge. The men escaped. What about the guard? He's in a critical condition. Uh, nobody allowed inside. Well, the inspector won't like this. Evening. This is the chief clerk. Oh, good evening. My name's Barnett. Uh, how do you do? Well, uh, have you any idea how much these men got away with? Uh, not exactly, Inspector. The staff are working on it at the moment. In the nature of 8,000 pounds, I should think. There's the gate money and the balance from the tote. I see. Well, they seem to have had everything timed to the second. Where to go and what to look for. Have your staff recognized any of them? Well, uh, one of the guards seems to think he recognized one of them. Uh, that's him there. Mm -hmm. I understand you think you recognize some of these men. Well, one of them, the one with the limp. Seems to me I've seen him before. Oh, where? Well, I can't be sure, but he looked like one of our bookies' runners. If it is the same man, he hasn't been round here for about six months. He was warned off by the stewards for some offence or other. Can you remember his name or where he lived? Well, I'm trying to. It's Lombard or Langham or something like that. Smiling Sam would tell you. Well, who's Smiling Sam? One of our bookies here. I've sent for him. Oh, good. Inspector Barnett. Thank you. Hello, yes. Barnett here. Who is this? Grangeview Hospital, yes. No. 
Uh, thank you for calling. The guard died a few minutes ago. That makes it a murder case. That's right. I understand he had a wife and two children. You can't go in there. It's all right. I was sent for. Oh, it's all right, officer. Uh, this is the man I sent for, Smiling Sam. Oh, yeah. I understand you have some information that you think might help us. Well, it's Lambert, Inspector. Rick Lambert. That's who you want to look for, if what they tell me is true. Well, what makes you so sure of that? Well, sir, Rick Lambert always was a bad one. And I've got an idea. I saw him near the track earlier in the evening. I wondered about it at the time, while with his having been warned off. And then there's that limp of his. Limp? Or is he a cripple? Oh, no, no. It's just a bad left leg. Something he got during the war. You know where he lives? Well, no, but I could find out. Would help us a great deal if you would. Certainly, sir. I'll go to the washroom, Charlie, and get oh, the mirror scrubbed. No. I told you about it before. Hello, Mr. Lambert. You going out again so soon? Yeah, I, uh, I have to see a friend. A friend, indeed. I shouldn't wonder if you wasn't going to see your girl, Mary. Well, maybe. Oh, well, if you're going to be out late, I shall have to latch up. Have you got your key? Yeah, yeah, I have, thanks. Oh, uh... Mrs. Greenwood, if anybody wants me, you don't know where I am, okay? I understand. You can trust me. Go on, Charlie, and get them ears scrubbed. Not at this time of night. Yes? Oh, uh, honey, it's it's me. Can I come up? Oh, yes, Rick. Just a minute, I'll press the buzzer. There, all right? I'll be right up. Oh, Mary, did you have to? What does he want? Oh, I don't know. He rang me earlier. I expect he wants me to... Oh, Mary, I, I know I shouldn't nag you, but... Well, do you think it's right for you to go on seeing Rick? Oh, of course. Why not? Besides, he's very generous. He's given me some lovely presents. Yes, but I'd like to know where the money comes from. Look, little sister, don't you worry about me. I can look after myself. Besides, he's asked me to marry him. Marry him? Oh, but you're not taking him seriously. Well, of course. Why not? Well, I, I never even thought about marriage. Well, I have. There he is. Now, darling, please, do try and look pleasant. Hi. Hello, June. Hello. Hey, if I'd known, I'd have come sooner. What's the matter with her? I don't mind her. She's in one of her motherly moods. Oh. Hey, uh, Mary, would you mind if I, uh left this bag here. No, of course not, if you want to. There's a little present in it for you. For me? Well, for us. Well, I, I think we could all do with a cup of tea. Well? You don't like me, do you? Like or dislike you. I just don't know you. Well, it's the same thing for me, only in reverse. Even so, I do like you. That's very interesting. Well, sure. You're Mary's sister. Police. Is Rick Lambert in here? Police? Are you fellas ever going to sleep? It's a busy night. Now, about Lambert. Yes, he does live here. Not that I see much of him, what with his gallivanting about, nor that I misses him neither. What's he been up to this time? Is he in? No, he ain't. Well, where is he? How should I know? Am I his keeper or something? All right. We'll just wait inside for a while. You got a warrant to come in here? Not yet, but it can be arranged. Well, until it is, you can wait out there. All right. 
right. We will move the car down to the end of the street and see if anything happens. You cover the back entrance. Charlie! Charlie! Your mum wants you. And bring your coat. What's wrong, Ma? It's Rick. I think he's in trouble. You wouldn't want to see Rick in trouble, would you, son? No, Ma. Do you know where he is? Why, sure. He know too. He let his go. Oh, good boy. Put your coat on. I want you to take this note to him. What's the matter, June? You going to bed? Don't be silly. You won't go to bed while you're here. Why not? I'm perfectly safe. <laughs> I'll get you a cup, June. In case you're wondering, I'm all right when you get to know me. I wasn't wondering. You think I'm a bad influence on your sister, don't you? Yes. Here you are. I'll go. Hello? Who is it? It's... it's me! Charlie Greenwood! I come for Rick! It's for you, Rick. Charlie, I think he said his name was. Oh. Oh, I, I wonder what he wants. I'll go see. Hello, Charlie. What are you doing here? I brought something for you. Come in. Late, why don't you tell him to go? Why can't you mind your own business? Thanks very much, Charlie. Here. What is it? I, uh, I have to leave. There's something wrong? Now, don't worry. I can handle it. Uh, that back upstairs, you, you will look after it for me, won't you? Yes, of course. Good. Well, when will I see you? I'll call you tomorrow. Oh, Ray. Lambert. Just a minute there. dear. Seven o'clock. Oh, no, I'll be prompt. Don't worry, dear. I won't forget the rabbit. Yes, dear. Goodbye, dear. Yes? Oh, it's you. You sent for me, squire? I did. Have you had time to think things over yet? Yes, sir. I promise not to land an airplane in Hyde Park again. Scout's honor. Don't be flippant. If it wasn't for the fact that your aunt owned this newspaper, you wouldn't be here now. But what would I do if I got fired? Go back to the States? There I have nothing but a bank account. You can't do this to me, Max. You came here because you said you wanted to work. All right. So we'll give you another chance. Good. What's this, a follow-up on that dog track story I told you about last night? Read it. Oh, no, Max, you can't do this to me. Who cares whether Pat Sherbert walked out on a production or not? I'll tell you who cares. Half a million readers of the Morning Star. Pat Sherwood has been the biggest name on the British stage. 
Has been is right. She's on her way out. But that dog track story, now that's real news. I know that. But Middleton is covering it. Now listen to me. Your aunt wanted you to stay when I was all for firing her. All right, you stay. But you accept the assignments I give you, and that is one of them. It's good for five lines on page six any time. Hey, what is she doing down at a bus station? That's for you to find out. And feed it for all the human angles you can find. Human? The way I hear it, she's a dragon. And I say we should drop him. Rick always was a hothead. There's no need for this strong arm stuff. And where's Ken got to? Maybe the cops have picked him up. He's scared of the cops. He'll talk, and we're facing a murder charge. This was your idea, Melford. Unless you can think of a way out, you're in it too. We'll see to that. You've already made one suggestion about dropping Rick. Perhaps the shoe is on the other foot. Maybe Rick is dropping us. Don't forget he's got the money. Hello? Mr. Melford? No, it's Ken. Yeah? Oh, Mr. Melford. I'm staying here at the house. I don't want to go outside till this thing's blown over. You're very wise. But tell me, have you seen Rick Lambert? No, I haven't. And I don't want to either. It was him that hit the guard. He killed him. He killed him for sure, Mr. Melford. I don't want anything to do with that. It was Rick that killed him, not me. Now listen, Ken. Listen. Listen to me. Rick's got the money, and the police are looking for him. If they get him, they're going to put a murder rap on him. And he'll talk and drag us all in with him. Understand? Now, there's only one thing to do. We've got to get him first. Yes, sir. What are you doing here? Just trying on your coat. It fits. How do you get in? The door was open. You were on the telephone, remember? I thought I'd wait for you. Shouldn't have come here. Why not? You hit that guard and killed him. It's nothing to do with me. But, Ken, we were all in the car together. You know how the law stands on a thing like that. <laughs> Look, I don't want anything to do with this. Why don't you get Melford to help you? Melford. I have the dough, not Melford. I'll make you a proposition. String along with me and do as I say, and I'll cut you in. OK? No, no, I want nothing to do with that money. Go on, get out. Listen, Ken, if I get caught, I'll shop you. So help me, I will. Oh. What do you want me to do? I have to leave the country. I need someone to fix up a trip for me. Now, you know your way around. One time you worked for Louis Romino. He does that sort of thing, doesn't he? Well, maybe you can, you know? All right. <laughs> what is this? The entrance is at the front. Hello, Louis. Oh, hello, Ken. Come in. You know, you should use the front entrance. Yeah, well, we prefer the back. I don't know your friend. He's all right. Uh, I've got to be sure, but if you say so. Well, what is it? Have you brought something you want appraised? Yeah. This, if you're interested. Money. But people who come in through that door, they bring bracelets, jewelry. They want money. I don't understand. Oh, my, uh, my friend's in some trouble. 
He wants you to get him out of the country. Trouble? If you can give me away, I'll pay you for it. That's all you need worry about. <laughs> Very difficult and risky. It's going to be expensive. How much? 500 pounds. 500? You're in trouble. There's a ship at Southampton sailing for Portugal. The captain is a friend of mine. We do several bits of business together, you understand? Sure. He's sailing on the high tide tomorrow. He will hide in a boathouse on one of the Southampton backwaters. I will arrange with the captain to send a boat for you. All right. But first, 400 more. Don't worry, you'll get it. Only make the arrangements. Rick, I'll try. I'll do my best to be there. Honey, you have to be. You, uh, you haven't changed your mind, I mean, uh, about marrying me, have you? No, of course not. We are going away, like you said. Sure, it's all fixed. Uh, honey, this is important. That bag I left with you last night, bring that along. Be careful with it and don't lose it. I won't. Anybody would think the crown jewels were in there. Now, you may be right at that. Well, I have to arrange for some tickets and so on, so bye-bye. Bye. Miss Dennis? Yes? Can I have a word with you? What about? May we come in? Just a minute. You can't barge in here like that. We're making inquiries about Rick Lambert. Rick? Yes. Have you any idea where he is? Why, no. You haven't seen him? Of course not. You're quite certain? Yes. Why? Miss Dennis, we'd like you to come down to the station, if you will. What for? Because you're lying. You see, we know that Rick was here last night to see you. Now, if you wouldn't mind coming down. Get my coat. All right, Daisy. Goodbye. Bye. Do you mind if I leave a message for my sister? Of course. Mrs. Dawson. I'll take her down to the station. You stay here and keep me informed of anything suspicious. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mrs. Dawson. Oh, June. Mm -hmm. You just missed your sister. Missed her? Yes. Uh, she had to go out. Oh, thank you. Oh, she wanted you to meet her at the Golden Lantern on the Southampton Road. She said you can take a bus there from Victoria. But why? I don't know. Uh, she did mention a young man named Rick. Mrs. Dawson, you don't think they're running off together? I mean, she didn't say anything about marriage. Marriage? Oh, so that's it. She's a sly one, that Mary. She wanted you to take a bag there, the one that this Rick brought in last night. I see. All right, thank you, Mrs. Dawson. I'll see to it. Oh, uh, did you hear about Mrs. Peabody? She's going to have a baby, and she's going to have it here. Oh, that's gratitude for you. Okay, so that's set, huh? Today I go down to Southampton, I hole up at the boathouse and wait till I'm picked up. Eh? That's right. But there is one little item you have forgotten. The rest of the money. If Ken's going with me down to the boathouse, he can bring it back. But... Hey, but I don't want to go to Southampton, Lewis. You better go, Ken. But let me warn you, Mr. Lambert, that if I do not hear that he's got the money, you don't sell. I arrange it on the phone. 
What's the matter? Don't you trust me? <laughs> Come on, Ken. The first thing we have to do is to pick up a nice, fast car. Sherwood. If you must go, I don't know why it has to be like this. We can go by train, we can go by road. That's exactly what we're going to do. I mean my car. I've paid enough for it. Yes, out of the 10% you've collected from me all these years. <laughs> You're for life? No, thanks. I don't smoke. That's funny. I figured show people always did. Really? I makes you think that I'm in show business. And even if I were, what business is it of yours? General interest. I see. Couldn't be that you're a newspaper man, for instance. Why, of course not. Why? Because I don't like newspaper men. I think they're always looking for cheap scandal and gossip. Well, thanks very much for the tip. I'll remember it if I bump into one. Excuse me, I want to make a phone call. Do. But why didn't you say something? You can see he's nosing around. It's pretty obvious, isn't it? Yes, Max, are down here now. Well, so far, I don't know where she's going. And she isn't talking to the press. What is this? Well, hello there. Oh, no, not you, Max. I was just saying hello to an old friend of mine. Someone I haven't seen for a long time. It's customary to wait outside. I'm sorry, but well, there was a man following me, and this was the only thing I could think of to do. Uh, hold on a minute, Max. I'll be right with you. A man? What kind of a man? Um, my husband. You see, I've decided to leave him, and he's out there now. If he catches me, it will Your be... husband? Where does that place me with you in here? What's going on there? Please, you must try to understand. Just let me stay here a minute. He'll be gone soon. Well, all right. Uh, yes, Max, I'm still here. Yes. I don't know what in blazes is going on down there. All I know is I told you to stay with Pat Sherwood no matter what. Right, Max, I'll do it. Hey, do you mean go all the way? Just a minute, where do you think you're going? Thank you, thank you very much. All right, Max. If you think I earn my money sitting in a bus all day, I'll do it. You bitch. Try to keep your mind on it. Use your head if necessary. You don't have to say you're a reporter. Pretend you're something else. A, a shoe salesman, perhaps. And if you don't come back with that story, you might as well be. Trips. I hate them. Always believing in getting well refreshed beforehand. Can you join me? No, thanks. I'm only going on a short trip, I hope. A short? Certainly, old boy. Now, wait a minute. Look, I... You sure you won't change your mind? I mean, about going back in the show? No, I told all you. All right, all right. I'll go and get the tickets. Do. Look, I really don't care for a drink. It's a little early in the day for me. Now, no argument. I'm your friend. And I tell you, any friend of John Cross stands forth to receive. Two whiskeys, please, for me and my friend. I sell shoes. 
How about you? Uh, shoe salesman? No, 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 that isn't my line. Uh, not yet it isn't. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm a botanist. A botanist? I'm very glad to know you. Hey, I know you. Do you? Yeah, I'm sure I do. I met you before somewhere. I can't quite place it for a minute, but I, I think of it. Um, were you ever in the staggered hounds of Whopping? No, no, never. No? Oh, I'll think of it soon. Oh, I, I would like you to meet my friend, Mr. Bottomless. How do you do? How do you do? How about the George and Crown, the Shepherd's Bush? No, I'm afraid not. Mm, oh, well, I'll think of it. Don't you worry. I'm sure you will. Oh, you run out of pubs. Oh, I won't do that. I know more. I'll bet you do. Well, a happy days. Cross the sand. Hey. Lady left her gloves. I'll be right back. Pardon me, miss, you uh, forgot your gloves. Oh, thank you, Mr. Botanist. Oh, my friend was a little mixed up. Yes, quite a mixture. You see, my name isn't Botanist, it's Ford. I told him I was a botanist. Thank you, Mr. Ford. It's a pleasure, Miss Sherwood. Now, it's you who are getting mixed up. My name isn't Sherwood. Oh, I'm sorry. I could have sworn that you were Pat Sherwood, the actress. Yes, quite a number of people mistake me for her. Are you sure you're a botanist? Here we are. Two tickets for Southampton. Southampton, now, isn't that funny? That's just where I'm going. Then we'll see you on the bus, Mr. Botanist. I'm sure you will. Please board that coach on ray number 15. With passengers for the 10.15 a.m. Royal Blue departure for Bournemouth, via Winchester and Southampton. Now, Bobby, be careful. Don't play with that. Hi, hello there. Do I beg your pardon? I was just saying hello to a runaway wife. I thought I'd introduce myself. I'm the detective your husband hired to keep an eye on you. All aboard! Any more for the Skylark? Um, how about the, uh, the Golden Archer in my blood? Were you ever in there? No, I wasn't. Oh, pity. They sell very good beer. Fosteries, seat belts, ladies and gentlemen. We're just about to take off. Far? I don't know. Well, that's strange. Neither do I. Nice day. Looks like we're in for a pleasant journey. Now, look. Thank you for what happened in the phone booth, but please don't let it give you any ideas. Now, instead of wasting your time, why don't you get off here? Why? The bus is going all the way to Southampton. Yes, but what you said just now... Young lady, you've been keeping company with the wrong people. Suspecting me of ideas like that. Well, anyway, uh, not this early in the day. And besides, that man I was talking to in the phone booth would be very angry if he learned I wasn't on this bus. Hello, Miss Dennis. I've told you that we want Rick Lambert. If you're covering up for him, we'll soon know, and you'll be in trouble, serious trouble. I can't help you. You've never seen any of these men before? No. You've never seen them with Lambert? If I've never seen any of them before, how could I have seen them with Lambert? But you have seen that one. Yes, that's him. Now, look, Miss Dennis. I suppose it's none of my business, 
What was your relationship with Lambert? You suppose right. It is none of your business. Well? I followed June Dennis as far as Victoria bus station, but then I lost her in the crowd. Several buses left while I was there. She might have been on any one of them. What were their destinations? One went to Margaret, another to Oxford, and there was one for Southampton. I see. Where was your sister going? I don't know. Oh, come now, Miss Dennis. Surely if she were going away, she'd have told you. Oh, well, she didn't. My sister and I don't get on. If you sent her to Lambert, you know, she may be heading for big trouble. Is there anything else, Inspector? No. You can go home now, if you like. Oh, one thing. If you happen to think of anything that you feel may help us, give us a ring. Why should I think of anything? Well, you probably don't know, but Rick Lambert was involved in a robbery last night at the dog track. One of the guards was killed. So you see, he's wanted for murder. Have those buses checked on? Yes, sir. Here's the bus. Mary should be on it. You'll be here for 15 minutes. You can get tea and sandwiches inside. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Mr. Botanist. You've been very helpful. When we get to Southampton, you must visit me at my cottage. It's on the outskirts. I have a beautiful garden. I'm sure you'll be very interested. Oh, I'd love to come and thank you very much. I'm having some difficulty trying to cross an iris with a wild rose. Could you give me any hints on that? Well, uh, of course, it could be done. It's a, it's a complicated system of blending the roots. I'd be only too pleased to show you. I look forward to that. Make way all ashore for the Jolly Roger. Why, hello there. What are you doing here? Haven't I met you in some bar somewhere? Well, just give me a minute. It was in the bar at Victoria. Remember? Oh, ha, ha, ha. I've never been there. Did you hear that? Are you going to stand there and let them say things like that to me? You're never any good when but I meet you. What, what you could have said, sir? I don't get this, it's her sister. It's the money. I don't know. You go inside, I'll talk to her. How about some lunch? Yes, that's a good idea, but first there's someone over there I want to speak to. Okay. Well, hello. This is a surprise. Where's Mary? Maybe you can tell me. I was supposed to meet her here. Did she tell you to come down? Look, Rick, you're running away with Mary, and I'm here to stop it. Now, where is she? I don't know, I tell you. Did she, uh, did she say anything to you about a bag? Yes, she did. That bag must be pretty important. Yeah, maybe it is. What do you know about it, anyway? Are you sure she didn't tell you to bring it down here? Let go of me, Rick. Uh, Max, listen, we just pulled into a roadhouse. I've been talking to Pat Sherwood. In fact, she's invited me down to her cottage. What's that? <laughs> ah, that's a bit more like it. Now you'll be able to get a story on her. Oh, but Max, listen, it, it's nothing like that. And the story is getting to be an important one. Mickey Delaney, her producer, is suing her. Says she refuses to cooperate. Won't wear tights. Uh, listen, Max, how do you cross an iris with a wild rose? Huh? What are you talking about? Iris, wild rose, what is this? Oh, never mind, I'll find the answer somehow. Oh, uh, that, that raid last night, have they found the fellow with Olympia? What's that? No. And that must to be for. Stop worrying your head about that case, it's none of your business. Now, your assignment is with Pat Sherwood, so go to it. Cottage and all. 
Max, hello. Hello, Max. Well, now, how about that food? Oh, well, no, I don't think so, really. No, I, I've changed my mind about the trip. I, I think I'll go back to London. Oh, no, you mean this is the end of a beautiful friendship? Better have some. All right, then I'll have some coffee, please. White. Good. Hello, Ahmed. Let me speak to Mr. Melford. Quick, quick. Okay, Ken, hold on. It's for you. Ken. Hello, Ken. Where are you? Look, Mr. Melford. I've been playing along with Rick to see what he's doing. And he's taken it on the run. Listen, Ken. Where's Rick heading for? We're on the Southampton Road, and his girlfriend was supposed to meet him here with the money, only she didn't turn up. And that means no money. If you ask me, he's double-crossing you and Romino. Romino? Luis Romino? What about him? I can't say any more. He's coming now. Hello? Hello? Well? If his girlfriend hasn't delivered the money, she must still have it. Where's the chicken, Dad? Where is the chicken? How old's the baby? Oh, Kim here's only three months old. But Bobby's 11. How do you like having a little sister? Oh, she's all right. But I think she'd be much better when she could talk. Just now, she's pretty dumb. Oh. <laughs> June, since you're leaving the bus here, how about us fixing up a date when I get back to London? You know, dinner and all the trimmings. Say, you're not listening to me. You're looking for someone? I'm sorry. Look, b before I came in, you didn't happen to notice a, a girl, a blonde, waiting here, did you? No. Should I have? I was waiting for you, remember? And besides, I was making a phone call. She's my sister. That's the reason I'm here. Oh, I see. Uh, that chap you were talking to outside, who's he? He's the reason for her being here. Oh, I get it. What's his name? Hurry, ladies and gentlemen. The bus is leaving now. I guess we'll have to hurry this. Now, oh, that chap over there, the one you were talking to outside, you were about to tell me his name. Who is he? Well, it's Lambert. Rick Lambert. Why? Lambert? Yes, do you know him? He's wanted in connection with murder and robbery at the dog track last night. Murder? Look, I don't know how you're mixed up in this, but you can't stay here with him. Come on, let's get on the bus, and I'll notify the police at the next stop. Now what? i to get back to town. I mean, I'll cancel that boat trip for certain if he doesn't get his money. No. Wait. Aren't you going to see me off? Oh, yes, of course. Look. So that's where it got to. What are we going to do? We can't stop any trouble here. Get the car. We'll follow them to the next stop. My good man, you don't seem to know that you're entrusted with the comfort of passengers. You might make your stops at a watering hole. After all, we're not camels. What should we do? Get on the bus. Hey, wait a minute. Barman, there's a big black car outside. Can you tell me who drove it in? No, I can't. Everybody left in the bus except those three. Are you sure you don't mind? No, not in the least, my dear. Thank you so much. Right. 
right. Now, Bobby, here. Don't you be a nuisance to the other people. You go and ask that lady if she's all right. My mommy wants us to know if you're all right. Oh, quite all right, darling. Tell her not to worry. You're a nice lady. Is he your father? Mm. <laughs> Bless you, Sonny. What's going on here? What happened? Oh, look. An airplane. Oh, now I remember. You're Pat Sherwood. You're an actress. You crashed in a plane among a whole group of bandits. And you were in your underwear. Oh! My good man, you're mistaken. Jerry, Jerry, say something. I'll never forget that underwear. <laughs> yes? Is Mary Dennis? Yes. Look, I'm not answering any more questions. Why don't you leave me alone? Questions? Aren't you police officers? No, Miss Dennis. Not exactly. Then who are you? We are friends of Frick. And I believe you have something belonging to us. To you? I don't understand. A bag. A bag? Yes. The money from the dog track was in that bag, wasn't it? That's right. And I believe you were to take it to him. Now, you are still here, so I presume the bag is also here. No, it isn't. Rick already has it. Don't lie to me. It's the truth. I was delayed and my sister took it to him. Where to? The Golden Lantern on the Southampton Road. I don't find anything while here. No, I think she's telling the truth. The Southampton Road would fit with uh, what Kent told us. Where's Rick heading for? I don't know. I never want to see him again. Are you sure about that? If you're holding out on us... I... Why should I? I don't want to get mixed up in a murder. Smart girl. Did he ever mention to you the name of Louis Romino? No. No, I don't remember that name. All right, Miss Dennis. Thanks for your cooperation. about babies. Nothing, except I used to be one. <laughs> used to be. Do you mind giving this baby to her mother? She probably know best what's good for her. Yeah, let me have her. It's probably only the wind. Yeah. Okay, 
Okay, just a minute. Why, Mr. Melford? It's a long time since you were here. It is, Remina. And coming in here reminds me of several business deals we've done in the past. Yes, indeed, Mr. Melford. Which makes it all the more difficult to believe that you could have double-crossed me. Double-cross you, but I don't understand. You know of Mr. Lambert? Mr. Rick Lambert? Well, I know of him. I have seen him around somewhere. Here, for example? Yes, he has been here. When? Uh, I don't remember exactly. He was here this morning to arrange some business with you, such as possibly getting him out of the country. But, Mr. Melford, why do you concern yourself with this? He has something that belongs to me. He's running away from the police on the one hand and from me on the other. Tell me, has he given you any money? Well, no, he, he, he said he's going to send it back. He won't. And that means he's running away from you, too. Well, now, if you want your money, you might as well tell us where he's gone. Well, he's leaving on a ship from Southampton tomorrow, the Stella Doro. But tonight, he's hiding in a boathouse on the left bank of the South Creek at Itchin. Thank you, Remino. It's nice to think one's old friend hasn't forgotten. Never, Mr. Melford, never. But until we follow this thing up, I think, Roger, you better stay here and keep my old friend company. Oh, but Mr. Melf... Go forward and be ready to drive off. What's wrong, officer? I just want to check your passengers. This is our chance. My, isn't he handsome? Get going in, quick! Get out of there, what do you think you're doing? Hey, 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 hey. Oh. Turning to the left.
Go ahead, see if everything's all right. And see if you can find a light. Okay, everybody out. But this man needs attention. Why? He's still breathing, ain't he? Okay. Get the bus out of sight and then come back here. Right. Okay, inside, everybody. Quick. This is a nice how do you do. It's a better plot than the script, just the same. None of this would have happened if you had stayed in the show. Ah, uh, don't worry about it. I'll see that Miss Sherwood gets a good cover in the paper. So you are a reporter. I knew you were no botanist when you said irises could be crossed with wild roses. Eureka! I knew I'd find it somewhere. Can't join me, old boy. You better leave that stuff alone. It'll do you no good. Who cares whether it does me any good or not? It's liquor, isn't it? Not medicine. <coughs> what is it? What's the matter? <coughs> Water. Hey, what are you going to do with us? Just sit tight and don't get excited. Well, you could let us go. And have you tell the police where we are? Aren't you funny? What's the matter with the kid? I don't know. Well, try and keep it quiet. I don't want it yelling all night. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll decide. Good. Hey, but Rick. Yeah? Well, we had a deal, remember? Well, me and I'll be wanting his money. He'll get it when I see the boat. Yeah, but what about me? So you want to pull out, eh? Well, I thought, you know. You're not getting the dough for thinking. You're getting it for sticking around and helping me out. Understand? Sure, Rick. <laughs> Look, can't you keep that kid quiet? She's not well. She needs a doctor. Okay, she'll have one tomorrow. Now, look, we're going to have to spend the rest of the night here, and I want it quiet. I could do with some rest. That baby's running a fever. Okay, so get her an ice pack. Don't tell me you kill babies too, Rick. There must be a doctor near here we could call. Nobody leaves here till after I've gone. But look, that baby in there needs attention. You heard what I said, lady. Yes, I heard you, Mr. Big Shot. You're a brave guy, as long as you've got a gun in your hand. But I don't think you'd be very much good without it, would you? You're just playing at being a gangster. You haven't really got what it takes. All you're interested in is your own lousy carcass and getting away with that money. You couldn't care less that there's a little baby out there probably dying, could you? If you know what's good for you, you'll shut up. Look, I'm not afraid of you, son. Look, I've already killed one, so it don't matter if I make it two, does it? Now, <laughs> I'm warning you. <laughs> That's right. Go on, boast if it helps you. You're just a little rat that crawls out of the sewers at night because you're too yellow to be seen in the daylight. You're not only contemptible, but you're sick, mentally sick, more sick than that child. But no doctor could help you. It's too late. Shut up, will you? You don't like the truth when it comes too close to you, do you?
There's a village about a mile down the road. You better go see if you can get a doctor. You better go with her, see she doesn't pull any tricks. How do we go? Walk, what do you think? Now get going. Boathouse up on the creek. There's a small baby. She's very sick, and we were wondering if you could come over. Yes, yes, I'll come. But I have a patient still in the surgery. Would you care to wait a moment? Thank I'm afraid this is going to take longer than I thought. Perhaps you'd better go down to the boathouse, and I'll come along when I've finished. Oh, we can wait. No. N no, we'll go back, Doctor, and wait for you there. Good. But, Doc, I'll be as quick as I can. Don't worry, Bobby. The doctor won't be long now. I'll try and get back to sleep. That must be the doctor now. All right, I'll see to it. Melford, what are you doing down here? I could ask you the same question. Things got too hot for me in London, or, uh, or didn't you hear? Oh, yes, I did. I also heard you were leaving the country. So that's it. I was going to send you back your cut, if that's what you're worried about. Good. I thought that was at the back of your mind. That's why I came down here to see that you don't forget. Well, let's go inside. All right. Are you the doctor? Doctor? Me, lady, I couldn't cure a slice of ham. What's the matter with him? The bus driver, Rick, slugged him. Another? We shall never get away if he keeps on like that. Mr. Melford, just seen the bag. The ba oh, Rick! Yeah? Uh, Rick, I was thinking. Maybe I could go on the boat with you. Would you mind? Suit yourself. Just a minute. Uh, there is bound to be trouble. How do we get aboard? Where's Ahmed? Where are you going with the bag, Ahmed? 
That must be the doctor. Come on, get inside. You the doctor? Yes, that's right. I understand that the child here is ill. Yeah, inside. Thank you. What's the matter with this man? He, uh, he had an accident. The kid's over there. Oh, yes. How old is the child? Three months. Just put the baby down there, please. Doctor's due for a surprise when he hands his bill in. I hope that baby's all right. That date of ours, is it still on? Let's get out of this first. That makes sense. I don't fancy taking Laughing Boy with us. This baby will have to go to hospital. Is there a telephone here? Sorry, Doc, the hospital is out. I don't understand. You'll have to do the best you can here for tonight. You're not calling the hospital and you're not leaving. Yeah, Doc, didn't you know? This man just robbed the dog track. He's already killed. That's enough. You'd better make yourself comfortable, Doc. Did you know about this when you called me? Yes, but that was one of his men with me. Didn't you get my message? Message? Well, yes, I wrote it on a mirror with lipstick. I left it in your waiting room. No, I didn't see it. It's daylight. There's no sign of the boat. They're not going to come. It's early yet. They'll come. So where's Ken? I left him keeping a watch for it. If it doesn't come, I'll kill that Romino. Only you won't get the chance. When the cops find out the doctor's missing, they'll search this area with a fine-tooth comb. It's the police car coming. See what I mean? Come on, Melford. You've got a car. What about me? This about you. <laughs> You've been drinking.
Don't come any closer. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Oh, pardon me. Won't you go ahead? Haven't I seen you somewhere before? <laughs> you know, after your performance last night, I'm a Pat Sherwood fan for life. Oh, very nice of you. Jerry, remind me to send him a couple of tickets for the show. Oh, thank you. Oh, but there is no show. You walked out, remember? You better wire Mike Delaney and tell him I'm walking right back in. Fine. By the way, where were you going to in Southampton? Well, you know, there's a little pub I know. Good idea. Do you mind if I go along with you? Oh, a ball for Taiwan! Hey, Ford! John Ford! Hi. Hi. What are you doing down here? Straight down as soon as we got your story through. It's great. We've scooped with Lambert. I knew I could rely on you when I put you onto it. Put me onto it, but Max. Of course. Uh, don't take all the credit myself. No, no, you used your head. You came all the way down here to tell me that? No. Well, I'm taking you back in a hurry. I've got a new assignment for you. Someone's cracked the London Central Bank for 50,000. Well, you put Middleton on it because Pat Sherwood's invited me to spend the weekend with her. What? You'd better be careful of these actresses. What would your aunt say? Coming right back with me. Oh, no, wait a minute, Max. You got it all wrong. Pat's going to act as our chaperone. Yes, you see, Don's not the only one she's invited. Now, here, Ford, the paper comes first. Personal affairs last. The pad over here will be back in town in 90 minutes. I'll tell you about the bank, you're the way.